Hi guys, this is System Secrets here with another vid. In this video, and this is the ultimate settings guide for Valorant, this guide will show you the best in-game windows and NVIDIA settings to boost your FPS, lower your ping and minimize input lag. I did some research for this video and it goes pretty in-depth. So just about everything that you could want to know is in this guide. I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's get into it. We're going to start off with Windows settings. The first thing we're going to do is to make sure that we have nothing extra running in the background, eating up some resources. Go to your taskbar and click this arrow right here. Then once you're here, you can just close any applications you're not using. What this will do is prevent apps from being in the background of your computer, literally doing nothing for you but eating up your resources. Next, go to your computer's tasks manager and just look through what's running and exit the apps that you don't want running while you're playing on by right-clicking on them and then clicking End Tasks. While you're doing this, just make sure that you don't end any Windows processes because your computer needs these running for it to work. Also, you don't necessarily need to have nothing else running, but if your computer is on the lower end and you struggle to get frames, it's generally best to close anything extra. Now, the next step is to turn off mouse acceleration because it's on by default with Windows computers. And if you're playing any type of competitive game, like Valorant, that requires precision, you always want mouse acceleration turned off. Type in mouse settings in your computer's search bar, and once you're here, click on additional mouse options. Now, go to pointer options and then check this enhanced pointer precision box. Click apply and that will turn off mouse acceleration. Now, the last step is to change your graphic settings. So, go into the search bar and type in graphic settings. Once you're here, click on Change Default Graphic Settings and turn on Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling and Optimizations for Windows Games, if you have these options. To make this actually apply to Valorant, go to Browse, then Local Discs, then Riot Games, then Valorant Live, then Valorant.exe, then click on Valorant. Down here, go to Options and choose High Performance. Now that we've optimized our Windows settings for Valorant, next we're going to move on to NVIDIA Settings. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you could just skip this part. There are timestamps below. Sadly, I can't show how to optimize for AMD or Intel just because I don't have a non-NVIDIA computer to show an example with. But for those who are still here, go to your desktop, right-click on it, and then click on NVIDIA Control Panel. We're going to start off in the Manage 3D Settings tab and then go to Program Settings and find Valorant in this list. There's a whole bunch of things to change here, so I'm just going to scroll through and you guys can copy my settings. What I did here is basically turn off everything that doesn't need to be on and set everything else to high performance. The final thing in NVIDIA settings won't change your game's performance, but it's just make things look a little bit better. It's under the Adjust Desktop Color Settings tab. In here, there's a setting called Digital Vibrance, which is basically just a fancy word for saturation. I normally set this to 70, it just make your game look a little bit more vibrant and colorful. That's everything that we want to change in the NVIDIA Control Panel, so just hit Apply. And now we're going to move on to In-Game Settings and we'll start off in the General tab. The first thing to look at here is your enemy highlight color. Now if you want things to be as competitively optimized as possible, you should choose yellow because that's the color that the human brain notices first. But I would say that really anything is viable here as long as the color that you choose contrasts with your crosshair. Because if they're the same or similar, it's not going to pop out and you won't know when you're actually on an enemy. Next is Raw Input Buffer, and whether you should have this turned on or off depends on your mouse. The general rule to follow with this is if you have a 2000Hz or above polling rate mouse, you should have this turned on and anything below that. It should be turned off. You can find your mouse's polling rate either in its software or by looking it up. Now we're moving on to Map Settings, and these are super important. I'd say that they are some of the most important settings in Valorant. For my settings, I have the map set to rotate, keep player center turned off, mini map size at 1.1, mini map zoom at 1, mini map vision cones on, and show map region name always. The reason these settings are so important is because the map gives you so much valuable info. For example, anytime one of your teammates sees an enemy, It'll show you exactly where they are and who it is. And the settings that I just showed you let you see the whole map at all times, so you always get that info. 
we're going to skip past the privacy settings and move on to the other. Most of the stuff in here is set to what it should be by default. But double check that your network buffering is set to minimum so you're getting the lowest possible ping. In the controls tab, there's really not much that you need to change here. Riot did a really good job with the default controls and they work really well for me. Some common changes that I see people make in their controls is they'll bind one of their utility buttons to a mouse button and I also see a lot of people have an equip less use weapon button. Next, we have the video tab and the settings in here can really vary depending on your PC and what your goals are. Since this guide is made to help you get the most FPS possible and give you a competitive advantage, I'll show you settings that are focused on that. Starting with the display mode, make sure that this is set to full screen because it's set to anything else, you'll get a bunch of unnecessary input lag. Limit FPS on battery is for people on laptops. And if that is you, I would turn this on and set it to something pretty low so your PC doesn't die while you're playing. If you're on a desktop, just leave this turned off. For most people, you can leave the limit FPS menu settings turned off because we'll limit it later with limit FPS always. But if you do have a really low end PC, I would turn this on and set it to something pretty low. Turn limit FPS and background on and set it to something like 60 because you can even see it and this will just save you some resources whenever you're tabbed off. Limit FPS always is definitely the most important setting in this tab. What I would do is set this to my monitor's hertz. Set NVIDIA Reflex low latency to on plus boost and if this isn't here for you, it's just because you don't have an NVIDIA GPU. Moving on to graphics quality tab, make sure you have multi-threaded rendering on so your PC uses all the threads that your CPU has for material and texture quality. You can set this anywhere from low to high just depending on what your PC can run. No matter what you choose here, you're not going to lose any competitive advantage as long as you're still getting FPS is at or above your monitor's hertz. For detail quality, no matter how good your PC is, you should leave this set to low. That's because if this is set to anything higher than that, there are things that will pop up on the map that can block your vision and mess you up while you're doing your lineups. For UI quality, this really doesn't change anything, so just leave this set to low. And definitely make sure the V-Sync is turned off because it'll add a lot of input delay for anti-aliasing. I like to set this to none and anisotrophic filtering, one set to 1x. I do this because that gives you jag lines that make enemies easier to differentiate from the background. I like to leave improved quality on and also experimental sharpening. These settings are both personal preference, but I just think that they look nice. Bloom is something that you can turn on to make your skins look a bit nicer, but this is something that will lower your FPS is a little bit. So again, just make sure you're getting frames that are higher than your monitor's hertz. Turn distortion off because when your screen is distorted, it's harder to see what's going on. For cast shadows, it's similar to Bloom, where it makes sure your skin looks nicer, but it does lower your FPS. So again, just make sure your frames are higher than your hertz. Under the stats tab, I'm not going to talk about everything here. I'll just go over all the things that I've found useful through my time playing. Client FPS is definitely something that you're going to want to have turned on and set this text only. If you want to see your input delay, you can turn on game to render latency, CPU plus GPU, and also set this to text only. Moving on to the final tab, we have audio. Now, there are only settings that I want to look at in here and it's called HRTF. What it does is it makes your sound 3D audio much more accurate. So like it says down here, as long as you have a stereo headphones and you have a spatial audio disabled, you're going to want to turn this on. When you do, you'll notice a huge difference in how easy it is to tell where footsteps are coming from. Now you have Valorant completely optimized for your PC. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Peace.